Okay, remember, we have a Mariner, and a Mariner is a DJI on steroids. When it comes from the factory, the Devco 7, which is a fine transmitter, is too complicated to use for all but professionals. So all of the units that I've been working with and have introduced into the market in the United States have full NASA electronics, and that is the transmitter and the receiver. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for this. Number one, I'm an absolutely terrible pilot. I can't fly RC, so it, it makes it easy for me. The Devco was impossible. Uh, the secondly, we see a lot of people going from the DJI and they want to upgrade. So they're surfing, they're doing stuff over the water, or like da Danny doing fishing programs. So it would make sense then to have them, give them the same control system for ease of operation. That's important. Now, just to show you how bad I am as a flight operator, the DJI unit is simple, but I've made it even simpler. There are two levers up at the top that control attitude and they can control different directions. I not only never use them, I have put rubber bands on there so they can't accidentally put down in an inverted a lock, an altitude lock, a lose lock position or something like that. So uh, for us mirror models who are uh, RC challenged, this works out very well. So all I have to do is worry about the power switch on. Oh, this shows you how stupid I am because they put on their first on, last off. A lot of people forget that, mm -hmm. and I do too. So anyway, little note to my dumb self. So I'm really just controlling the two knobs in the center. And of course, if we do have a gimbal, we can control the gimbal arrangement on the back of it. So that's the DJI transmitter. But since this is a Mariner, not a DJI, I'm going to show you how to use the NASA light control uh, setup system on a laptop computer. So uh, let's uh, give this a little try and uh, show you how to set it up. Okay, I think we're on? Yes. Now I'll be filmed by a professional photographer, so I'm quite honored. <laughs> we're going to do a setup <coughs> for the uh, NASA and uh, with the equipment comes a special cable. If you had an Android system, this is simply a USB with a, 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 a micro connector on the bottom of it. There, I know it confuses people. There are four different styles. This is the one that generally fits on the Android type systems. This will go into a slot on the NASA. Uh, and this is usually the LED battery eliminator box. And so we put the big end to the big end and the small end to the small end. And we simply plug that in. The next thing we'll do is we'll take the cable and we'll put it into any of the USB ports. Could be USB 2 or 3. Into my, in this case, my little Sony laptop here in the lab. And the program, which is a free download from DJI, is called DJI Nasda M Light Assistant 1.0. There is only 1.0 model. So what I'll do is I'll click on this. So it's a DJI multi-rotor. I don't know why it says skip, but I'll just hit skip down here. And you can see we come up with a, a nice little palette here with a bunch of interesting pictures onto it. Now the only thing that I don't like about DJI is this is small. We cannot enlarge this. So if you have a problem with the eyes, put on your glasses at this time because you can't make that any bigger than what it is. So we are set up, we are linked up by the USB cable. So I'll do two things. The first thing I'll do is I'll turn on my transmitter, red light indicating that it's on. And the second thing is I will add some power. I just need one battery power to my Mariner. So let me plug this in. Okay, we've got battery on. <clears throat> now notice we have two green lights. Uh, this is the NASDA green light showing us everything is okay. This is our NASDA receiver saying that we are linked together. If this green light is flashing, then you have to sync the transmitter and the receiver. Now how do you sync the transmitter to the receiver? Well, it's pretty easy because right under there, there is a little button. And when you press that little black button with your finger, it will turn red for about three seconds and then lock on green. 
That is the automatic sync between transmitter and receiver. Okay, so we've got green and green. We're pretty much ready to go. So let's go back into our program and you'll see we have about six different areas that we can explore on this. The first area is the mounting. So we're looking at our main control system and it tells us our X, Y, and Z coordinates. So again, my NASDAQ controller is right in the X center, right in the Y center, but it's located a little bit high. It's about three or four centimeters up. The batteries are weighing a lot down the bottom, so it's up a little bit higher than that. So again, we can change this pretty easy if we want, maybe, maybe three centimeters. But anyway, that looks pretty good to me. The second thing we're going to do is click down here to motor mixer. This is a quad rotor, and over here you'll see a picture. So it gives the motor orientation from the front, and we can set our idle motor speed. The recommended is in the center, so I will leave it there. If you're going into a hex, a Y, a quad, whatever, you can make your different selection there. The next thing we do is we calibrate the transmitter. The NAS is unique. They're a D-bus system. So this is what you want to do. Select D-bus. And you're going to select the cutoff as an intelligent cutoff. So it makes a decision based on voltage levels and everything like that that it'll actually do an auto land. What you see next are the throttle, the rudder, ele uh, elevator, and aileron controls. Now we can calibrate that if need be. Now I don't need to on this one because all the green bars are in the center. So if you notice what I'm, I'll do is uh, as I move these controls, we'll actually see the controls move on the screen. So moving this, moving up and down, I'll move my throttle back and forth so you can see they all return into the center, center indicating good calibration. Now, if for some reason that wasn't the case, you completely messed up your system, all you'd have to do is to hit the start and then recalibrate. Now, even though it's calibrated, I will do that just to show you how. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit start down here again. Okay, now notice it's on the black. So as I'm turning these things, you'll notice they're moving back and forth. And I've got my two right ones back in the green. Now I'm going to move my left ones. I just hit all four corners clockwise, counterclockwise, one or two times. And lo and behold, we're right down in the center. So I recalibrated something that I didn't have to do but I wanted to show you how to do it. Now if we're happy with that, we can hit right. Now right means that we're storing this information in the program which is actually fed by the USB into the control unit itself. So I'll click right on that and lo and behold that's it. Now the next thing since we have our transmitter calibrated, we'll hit autopilot. So I'm hitting down to autopilot. Now I've set these basic gains on a little bit of experience. Not that I have any, but anyway, somebody helped me do this. So this is what I recommend and what I've also set up for uh, for Danny's copter. So we can see the basic gain and pitch and roll and everything like that. For the DJI, the numbers are a little bit higher, but they're not that much significant. Okay, so uh, under here, enhanced fail-safe methods, I want to go home and land. So that's it. I don't want to just land because I always have GPS onto it. Okay, the next one is the gimbal. Well, in this case, we don't have a gimbal system, so the gimbal is off. But if you do have a gimbal in it, you can set your travel limits and your pitch and roll and everything like that. And then the last one, which is important, is your voltage cutoff. So voltage protection is on. Uh, I have a four cell LiPo. You can select it. For example, DJI uses a three cell LiPo. Maybe if you have a hex that's running five or six cells, you want to select it in there. So you can actually change some of these values. So the loaded value at different cutoff points would be 14.5 to 14.0. So that gives you a flashing LED warning on the copter. Uh, but also will override because we've selected intelligent control and physically land the copter safely. So again, you don't really have to, uh, to worry about too much of that. Okay, so that's hopefully gone pretty much through the uh, control setup then on the NASDA. So all we do is we can shut this off and then we'll pull our batteries out and we'll be ready for the next phase.
Excellent.